up, everybody? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I am back with another episode of the Horizons Author Lounge, and I'm super excited because we are finally kicking off Men's Health Month. And in um, observation of Men's Health Month, I will be interviewing all male authors throughout this entire month of June. So um, just very quickly, this is our promo for the month of June. Today, we're going to be talking with authors Eric Williams and Jamal Bias. And then next week, we're going to have a special show. The show will not be taking place on Monday the 10th. It's actually going to take place on June 9th, which is a Sunday. And we're going to be talking with the co-authors of the new anthology, Unspoken, which is all about men's mental health. So I'm really looking forward to that panel discussion. On June 17th, we'll be talking with author Shakir Rasan and then my friend, Victor McLaughlin. And then on June 24th, we will be rounding out the uh, Men's Health Month series with Jonathan Harris and Trent Walters. So this is going to be a great, great, great month. And I need you here every step of the way because we are going to be really, really hitting a lot of issues that affect men. And then at the same time, I want you to be able to get to know some new authors if you're not um, familiar with them yet. And um, if you are familiar with them, maybe you can get reacquainted with some of these authors. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring on my first guest, Mr. Eric Williams. And um, he is the author of the late, his latest novel, which is called The Wendigo's Prey. Did I say that correct? Yes, ma'am. You said it correct. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Thank you for being on the show tonight. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm very honored to be here with you. Well, I got to tell you, I love your tenacity because um, you had contacted me about being on the show. And for some reason, we kept, I don't know, we were losing touch or we, something was happening, but you did not give up. And I want to thank you for that. I'm, so I'm really happy to have you here tonight. And um, I think our paths have crossed a few times, but um, I want to, um, this next half hour, just really get to know you. So if we can get started with you just telling everybody, who is author Eric Williams? Uh, yes, well, my name is Eric Williams. I am the author of actually five books. Uh, my newest book is called The Wendigo's Prey. Um, I am, uh, I'm, right now I am presently living in Texas. I'm not a Texas native, but uh, me and my wife met in the military and she's from Texas. So we got married and moved back to our home state. Um, been living here for almost well a little over 20 years now and just uh you know i mean i'm not a texas bred but it's home down so i'm making the best of it i i do i do like it here the weather can be extreme <laughs> right now we're dealing with extreme rain it seems like it rains every day for the last month well um tell us first about um your latest book um the well, window is great my latest book is, is it okay if i show the cover for it of course Oh yeah, my latest book is called The Wendigo's Prey. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a scary I'm a cover. It's beautiful, but that's a scary looking cover. But see, the, uh, the the cover is, I the cover is I don't want to call it misleading, but the cover is just you know the cre it's not a scary book. First of all, I didn't want to write a scary book. I wanted to write an intense thriller. Mm. It's more it's more of a thriller book about this creature chasing four people uh, on a weekend uh, excursion in the woods. One of the uh, it was four it was two couples going for a weekend trip to the woods. One of the party members gets separated from the party, and this creature ends up chasing that person. And, mm. then, and then one of another party member ends up chasing after the creature chasing that person. So I like it. Like I said, it's called an intense thriller. Um, it's just about I, you know it's about how humans respond in intense moments. You know one oh. person, yeah you know what I mean I, it's a study in that I call it study human nature about how you gonna respond. You know, in you know, in a tense moment, are you going to step up to the plate, or are you going to run behind, run for cover? Okay. Well, that's shoot. So, tell us a bit about the um, the characters and the story. So, it sounds like it's almost a fight or flight type story. It is. That's one of the uh, that was one of the rationales in my mind about fight, fight or flight. Um, like I said, the character story is it's two cousins. Their name are Crystal. And I forgot the other cousin's name here, uh, real quickly. Crystal and Terry. They, you know, two okay. female cousins that you know grew up together. Um, they went to high, they went to school together. But after high school, Terry went off to college while Crystal joined the military. Mm -hmm. But after you know, after Crystal get up, get, got back out of the military after so after 10 years, 
they uh, get together. They both have boyfriends, you know, slash fiancés, and they decide to take a weekend trip to the woods. And while they're on a weekend trip, like I stated, one of the party members gets separated from the group. And this creature, this creature is actual or uh, real. I'm not going to say it's a real mythical creature in Native American culture. Anybody okay. who's in Native American culture knows that Wendigos do exist in that culture. They have a, a long, you know, long history. Okay. Now, what exactly is a Wendigo? Tell me, tell me a bit about that. Uh, the Wendigo is uh, a creature that used to be a human being once upon a time, but they stated that back during the um, early 1800s, when uh, the country of when America was being discovered, that uh, when they was traveling westward out out west, uh, sometimes they you know got bleak and desperate, you know, far as just being hungry, whatever. And mm -hmm. a Wendigo is a person that a actually ended up eating another person for survival initially. But oh, they, yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, situation calls for, you know, it's like, you know, it calls for it. And some people uh, actually ended up eating, you know, other people to survive. But um, the thing about the creature here is that a person got turned into a Wendigo by in enjoying it too much. By, you know, Ooh. I mean, they, they, they craved it after a while and they purposely, you know, was eating humans. And this creature, wow. like I said, you know, is it's, uh, supposedly 10 feet tall. They live in uh, cold parts of America, in, you know, in uh, Canada, like in the Minnesota, Wisconsin parts of the country, you know, and, and kind of like in Canada. They live in cold, you know, real cold territory. They're supposedly, you know, real tall and skinny. And they're, they're always hungry. They're always hungry. No matter, you know, mm -hmm. how much they eat, you know, they're always hungry. And they can hibernate for like, you know, months at a time if they can't feed. Well, you now know, you so said you weren't creating a scary story. That sounds pretty scary, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you now you have some other books. Um, can you kind of run through the? I don't know if you have your other books in front of you, but do you want to maybe um, show us some of the titles or well, share the titles of your other? Well, books? I'll just go ahead and show the each. I, well, I do have one other book I haven't mentioned yet, but I'll okay. just go ahead and show the first book. And uh, like I said, it's called Scott Family. It's a trilogy. So I wanted to actually uh, speak on this is Scott Family trilogy. This is called The Last Time. This is the book that starts the trilogy. Okay. It's basically uh, a teenage love triangle. Uh, the main character is 16 year old. His name is Jordan Sparks, and he meets a girl. Oh, no, his name is Jordan Scott, excuse me. He meets a, he meets a girl at a party named Rain, and they kind of, you know, connect, you know, and have a good, you know, connection with each other. But Rain mm -hmm. has Rain has a jealous ex boyfriend that won't let her go. So mm -hmm. uh, his, his name is Dwan. So Dwan and Jordan have words, and Jordan ends up getting incarcerated in a juvenile boot camp. And it just, it just, it just tells the story about, you know, the the, the the trauma that uh not jordan is not a bad kid he just kind of confused and lost and selfish mm -hmm. i don't know how, i mean if you ever dealt with teenage sometimes teenagers just don't you know think about exactly. nobody but themselves they think it's about them and jordan's that type of person but why he's incarcerated he kind of learns lessons about you know it, it's bigger than me i need you know, i need outside help i can't do this by myself and between the staff at the boot camp and his family his mom has his back his brother has his back between his family they have his back uh you know, he realizes it's bigger than me. I can't do this by myself. And, you know, uh, it's not just about me. Because, no, I mean, I'm sure you can say, you say, I'm sure we all need help. Everybody, you know, can, you can't do it by yourself. All these books I've wrote so far, I wrote them. But there are people in the background that's helped me, assisted me between the editing, you know, writing the covers, ideals. I bounce off my wife and friends. So I know, you know, it's not about me. Um, the second book in the series is actually called You Never Said Goodbye. Mm. It, it carries on the story about what happened with Jordan. I mean, and it, it, this story picks up where his little brother kind of gets involved to Jordan's situation. His little brother's name is KJ, and he kind of gets involved in the situation with Jordan. And it just talks about family having, you know, the back through thick and thin. You know, I mean, one of the uh, the subtitle was not like the subtitle. It's a good motto that was placed on the book. I didn't even come up with it, but it, it says there's strength in forgiveness. And I, I do believe in that. There's Absolutely. strength in forgiveness. And so that's a good quote that I try to, you know, use in my own particular life that, you know, their strength and forgiveness. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away about how the story plays out, but that quote is definitely, you know, prevalent in the story. Right. When, now, when do you think the next book will be out? That's a good question. Cause like I said, I just, I just started. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not rushing you. I'm just asking. I mean, I mean are we looking at next year, maybe? Uh, maybe late this year. Uh, a lot just depends on, um, you know, my work situation. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I just started. I have it maybe a week at the most. I got into it, and I'm still developing certain aspects of the story. But I do know I want to tell the story. Just you know, 
just want to make sure it's like, I, I want to be proud of every story. I don't want to put something out there just to put it out there. I never will do that. I, every book I've put out so far, I believe in 100 percent. And I want to keep that track record up that I'm not, you know, do that. So uh, I'm thinking either late this year or early next year. 